January 1st, 2024 brought with it not only a new year, but a new slew of entries into the treasured public domain. And this year, the new entry that had everyone talking was Michael the Mouse himself. That's right, after years of Disney lobbying for longer and longer copyright extensions, to the point that one of these laws is called the Mickey Mouse Protection Act, the company has finally let go. Steamboat Willie from 1928 entered public domain on New Year's. This version of Mickey Mouse could be used freely. And then that very same day... Combined with last year's Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, made right when those characters went into public domain, there's now talk of a new genre forming. The newly public domain slasher flick genre. I, I, I don't know, I'll workshop that name later. But oh great, do we have to deal with these from now on? Is every January going to be haunted by some shock value horror movie starring whatever beloved children's icon has been released from copyright protections? To some, this trend is already wearying and even dismaying. To me... This trend is great to see. Not because the movies are good, far from it, I am not defending them artistically. I have not even seen Blood and Honey, I don't really want to, and Mickey's Mousetrap does not look good either. They absolutely look like cynical, edgy cash grabs more interested in shock value. And yet, I'm glad they were made. It's an exercise of the rights that we now have for these characters and works. I don't know if it's fully sunk in yet. You can now write a story make a comic, make a movie or show about this version of Mickey Mouse, and make money from it. You do not need the Walt Disney Company's permission. You can use him as freely as you can use Hercules or King Arthur or Snow White. In fact, fuck it. Mickey Mouse is now a canon character on my channel, and I'm going to make this very explicit. This is not parody, this is not satire, this is not fair use. I don't need fair use anymore. Mickey Mouse is an actual character in this fully monetized video. Anything you want to say to the audience, Mickey? Ah! Oh, yeah, and Steamboat Willie, you still only spoke in uh, squawks and whistles and sighs. I don't know if that voice itself is copyrighted. Uh, just to be safe, let me translate for you. Rah! 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 <laughs> Oh, Mickey, you always know what to say. Now, I've seen some stuff from people lamenting that this isn't what Walt and his family would have wanted. That this treatment is twisted and exploitative, that this is wrong. And on the one hand, I get that, especially from artists. That's why we do have copyright, so that people who create ideas and stories and characters can protect them and benefit from them. That is something worth defending. But on the other hand, you have the public interest. Years and years down the line, after the creator has had the chance to benefit from their work, those characters have to be handed over to the people to foster their own free expression. That means, yes, people are going to create and profit off of cheap, cynical versions of those characters and stories. That's part of the risk of being an artist. Your work will be received and used in ways you don't intend. Sometimes, even by your own company. Yeah, speaking of Mickey being twisted and exploited, maybe the reason the Walt Disney Company tried to keep him out of the public domain for so long is the fact that he's still trademarked. That's a caveat here, of course, with our use of Mickey Mouse. Mickey the fictional character is free to use, but Mickey the brand icon is not. Therein lies a problem, because Mickey Mouse the character doesn't just represent Mickey Mouse, does he? They've been using this specific cartoon to brand the animation studio for over 15 years now. When we see Mickey Mouse the character, we also see in him Disney. Walt Disney the man, Walt Disney the studio, Walt Disney the company, with all their legacies and their successes and their baggage. And this was done intentionally. For decades, the brand of Disney was so intertwined with Mickey Mouse, a character they no longer control. I guess the lesson to be learned here is don't build your brand's identity onto a single character that you are going to eventually lose control of. Because what's the alternative here? Oh no, Mickey is too precious and pure of a character. We simply can't let him fall into the wrong hands. Sorry everyone, the public domain is cancelled. No, that's ridiculous. We need these stories to fall into the people's hands because Taking them and using them in their pieces are how we get new ideas. Sherlock Holmes 2009 took these characters existing in the public domain 
and he used them to build a compelling new original story. West Side Story is a modernization of a Shakespeare play that's been in the public domain for centuries now, bringing its drama and tragedy and cautionary tale to a more relatable place for today's audiences. And of course, the obvious example, Walt Disney himself using public domain stories and tweaking them to make the animated classics we know today. Like I said before, creators are obviously entitled to the fruits of their own labor. That's what artistry is. Labor. They deserve to be rewarded with copyright. They deserve to hold the exclusive rights to their own creations. But when big business enters the picture, the rights holders are instead stockholders. And studios nowadays seem more willing to let the characters sit under lock and key rather than do anything with them. They're so eager to cling to their precious intellectual properties that they set the public domain back 20 years in the United States. But in 2019, the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act, the aforementioned Mickey Mouse Protection Act, finally ran out. And since then, the public domain is once again expanding. These movies are ugly, cynical, edgy cash grabs. They're also, intentionally or not, symbolic expressions of the right that we all have. I can even see meaning in the fact that they are so blatantly the opposite of what their previous rights holders would have allowed. Mickey Mouse belongs to us now. And if this genre bothers you, then I invite you to make your own work with the characters. This isn't me trying to be dismissive. I am genuinely reminding you that you no longer need to ask permission. Make the Mickey Mouse movie you want to see. Because you own Mickey Mouse too. But if you do, make sure not to include the white gloves, because that's from a later design that's not public domain yet. And if you include the white gloves, Bob Iger will personally hunt you down for it. Hashtag respect the gloves. Goodbye.